Have you ever seen Hedge? Should say that? No. I, I don't have my mind. Well, hello and welcome. Um, today we have Jack Howard um, with us, and we just wanted to um, go through Jack Howard's course this, this morning. Um, this guy is, I mean, we, we've been following this guy for some time now. Um, absolutely an incredible, incredible um, color technician. So we're so proud to have him on board with Hairdressing Live. Um, so I just wanted to ask Jack um, a couple of questions here. Um, what does, I mean, you've been educated for many, many years, Jack, actually. And uh, a couple of decades, yeah. So. A couple of decades, couple yeah. Of decades. And do you know what? I just wanted to ask the question was, what does education mean to you? Well, for, for me, me um, from, from a personal, personal perspective, it's knowledge. And knowledge is power. And um, um, when, you, when you have that power, you're in a stronger position within the salon to make more money. Yeah, very, very true, very true. Yeah. Um, I, I, do, I do believe in um, the way uh, education is presented. I mean, people, I mean, knowledge is power, unless it's applied, I, I suppose. Um, what advice would you give? I mean, you know, pe people do these courses, I suppose. Um, is, I mean, it isn't true, like, you know, constant repetition as well for, for people to practice? Because I suppose whenever they do a course as such, and they learn it, they, 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 they see something happening, it's, it's important for them to go back into the salon and practice it, right? Well, it really is. I, I mean, I, I teach from the perspective that I work behind a chair, you know, four days a week, five days a week if I'm not teaching. Um, so I'm a real commercial high street colorist at the end of the day. Just my high street's Brompton Road at the moment um, in Knightsbridge, but that doesn't matter, it's still commercial. But the, the key learnings that I always give out is practice, practice, practice. Because if you don't do the practice, what's the point of going on the course in the first place? So the course, really, I think that my courses have relevance to you, in a, to you as a high street colorist, who's for your consumers, um, and then you go home and you do it again. And the great, the great thing about um, hairdressing live, of course, is that you can reflect back on the video as well. Yeah, that, 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 that's very important. I mean, you, you just mentioned high street colouring and things like that. I mean, I, I, it's, it's nice to hear things like that because high street colour is, is to the mass-produced uh, market, realistically, isn't it? Well, absolutely, but I think that the, the, the wider market audience. has changed the conversation in the UK rather than the hairdressers changing the conversation. Mm. It was things like Instagram. Um, in, in many ways, myself coming back to the UK and talking about balayage when nobody was doing that. Um, Alex at Bleach doing dip dye. I mean... It is not what it was seven years ago. High street colouring is very different. Colouring is really creative at the moment. People are really game for different things. Um, but at the same time, they want beautiful hair. Yeah, yeah. I think you capture that perfectly, you know, with your... Um, I mean, although it's very creative, it's very commercial and it's very yeah. sellable. I mean, it, it, has to, it has to sell at the end of the day. What woman Do doesn't want to look like a Victoria's Secret model? Or at least have her hair anyway, so... You know, very, you know. very true. Um, it's, it's about complimenting, isn't it? It's about complimenting and making people look even better. I mean, I suppose that's ultimately our job, isn't it? Really? Absolutely, and I think that it's about making people look better. It's about um, instilling confidence maybe in somebody. Uh, we do a lot of things as colorists and cutters that people don't really think about. I mean, we're one of the few places where people actually get touched. A woman could go all day without somebody actually sort of saying, you okay? Yeah. You know, so we're, we're very... Um, we're a very sort of sensitive community mm -hmm. and we're a very caring community. Yeah, very, very true, very true. Um, yeah, because we, we're very in that close pro proximity with customers, aren't yes, we? Absolutely. It's almost like um, um, psychologists, aren't we? Uh, for, uh, what do we say, psychologists? Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, we uh, engage with them in a, in a different way to most... most um, totally, com totally engage with them. And it's a very personal kind of environment to be in. I often sort of think that, um, what do I often think? I don't know. I've got that <laughs> I'll come back to that one. Yeah, okay, it? okay. Uh, look, I mean, you, you spent a lot of time, I mean, you, you mentioned that you've had two decades in, uh, in, um, 
in your career doing education. Um, can you talk, take us through and walk us through uh, for the viewers there um, your American career? Because you spent a lot of time over there, right? Yeah, I did. I spent 18 years in the States, so it was, it was a long time, really. Um, I moved to America in 1993, and I walked into a position in a very busy salon, commercially successful salon in Washington, D.C. Okay. And um, I, walk, I took over a role of a young lady who'd gone off to work at Frederick Fakai, who'd opened in New York City. And up until that point, I was tradi very traditional English, you know, three colors in my foil highlights. It was, you know, it took me an hour and a half to do that, and it took me half an hour to do a tint and everything. And they taught me how to work differently. We're expected to do 18 to 24 colour clients a day. Wow. Uh, we had an awful lot of assistants. It was a very different way of learning and a very different way of approaching a client, but it still was luxurious. Um, and I remember my first client um, saying to me, I want my hair to sparkle. Well, I'd never heard anything like that in my life. And I was like, what does that mean? Um, and that was the beginning of me understanding how to actually communicate with the consumer rather than talking to her as a technician. Right, okay. So that, that was quite, that's quite a sort of a, a point that I measure it by. And by the time I left the States in 2010, I'd gone from a, a clientele that was 100% uh, foil to about 75% balayage, 25% foil. And I was billing at that point over nearly $500,000 a year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Building, not making. Building. Okay. Wow. But, you know, yeah, it was very busy. My God. Look, I mean, you, you mentioned there as well, I mean, 18 clients a day. I mean, I, I'd say some of our viewers are going, my God, how do you, you fit that many people in? I mean, and still make people feel, um, I suppose, you know, that high-end luxury sort of environment, because I'm sure that, that that's what you've worked in. I mean, you mm. mentioned those names, Frederick Fakai and all those, I mean, you know, 18 clients a day, that's a lot of clients. Well, 18 was a bad day. 18 was a bad day. 24 was a better day. Oh, my God. But then I knew people that were doing 30, 40 clients a day, but they were having lots of assistants applying their tints and whatever. So they'd consultate? They'd consult and then mix and then assistant. But I, was, I didn't do that. I actually did my consultations and my mixture myself. But that's a young man's game. I couldn't do that now. I mean, I'd be absolutely worn out. I did end up, uh, you know, with wrist problems and things like that. But, so... Now I'm happier with sort of eight to ten. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and do more education, like you yes. said earlier on. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I think I think it's good. I think you're educating um, a lot of people at the moment, and uh, I know you do a lot of courses all over, don't you? You do you do in salon courses as well, don't do, you? In, we do. I do in salon courses. So basically, I've got quite a nice gig, really. I have my own company, mm -hmm. so I offer four different types of education on my website, mm -hmm. which is JackHoward.co.uk. Yeah. And then I educate for L'Oreal Professional as a guest artist in the UK, and I'm also an international guest artist for them, which is great, so I get to travel internationally. Um, I'm doing a little stint in Abu Dhabi, five times a year at the moment, working in a salon, and I have my own range of hair extensions with Beauty Works online. I create a range of oh, wow. extensions. So, um, yeah. I'm out there. Jesus, he's a busy boy. You're a very, very busy boy. I've been called a boy in a long time, but thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> very good indeed. Um, look, I mean, you, you, your, your speciality, I mean, even today you're covering the, the whole balayage technique, right? Um, what does balayage, uh, wh why does it appeal to you so much? Like, what's, 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 you know? Well, I think initially it didn't appeal to me at all. I was quite, I was quite set in my ways, um, and I was making good money with my foil highlights, my traditional English foil highlights, which is a, a pre-lightener, a high-lift tint, and a top blonde. Um, but what I realized was that women were going to New York to get this done, and it's like, or to LA, and it's like, well, why aren't I doing that? So I put myself on some courses, which is what you know, you're tuning in for today, and I also started to work with somebody who was French, and the Balayage is a French technique that's been around for a very long time. And, and what, what I, I saw, saw, the difference was that it, it created a softer, more natural, more youthful look, which appeals to women from sort of 16 to 70, you know, because of the softness of it, there's that softer, more natural grow out. So in, the reality was that you were creating beautiful colours that were just very commercial, and uh, the looks make people feel relevant. Yeah, yeah. 
It's like bespoke colouring on the It totally is. is. I mean, you know, you've got your standard foil section pattern. There isn't really... I mean, there's a standard sort of application method that I teach and a slight, slightly standard um, section pattern. But what you are doing is you are actually working with the hair itself, working with the natural ball, you're working with the natural variation in time, you're working properly with the hairline. Um, so you are actually, each one, each individual person is different. Yeah, very good, very good indeed. I mean, I, I, I love the colouring, I love it because it's sort of, I mean, it's, it's wearable, it's sellable, it's, it grows out gracefully for customers, you know. It's, and again, I mean, it's what sells realistically, I believe it's um, an incredible technique. Um, so, I mean, um, we've, we've had a couple of questions come in and, and we, we should sort of um, put them to one side so we could ask them for you anyway. So, <laughs> uh, so, you know, you, you, your favourite celebrity hair colour, you know? Um, I've got a few really. I mean, I have to say, Sergio Sapolka is the balayage icon in many ways. I, you know, the way it's changed over the years has just been beautiful and seamless. Uh, I love Jane Fonda's colour. Um, my friend Nancy Braun in LA does that, and she looks great. But then you've got um, Christy Teigen, who just is as hot as hot can be, going out there. I mean, there's just there's loads of girls out there that are looking great at the moment. Yeah, it's and new up and coming people. And yeah. Like bloggers nowadays, isn't there? There's like, like so, so many sorts of uh, increase of, of, like, I mean, social media as well. It's like all these new, f like, famous social media people coming out there as well. well. We don't call them bloggers now, we call them influencers. Influencers, that's right. Influencers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 the game's changed. This game changing, isn't it? So, so look, um, I, I, again, what, what's us on everybody's uh, tip of the tongue as well? Who, who influenced Jack Howard, you know, back in the day? Who was your hairdresser muse, you know what I mean? Obviously, coming through your, your career, you know, I mean, obviously you're a very experienced hairdresser, but now, um, back, back in uh, the younger days of Jack Howard, when... Oh, gosh. <laughs> which wasn't those, too long ago. Which was those were the days. I think it's interesting, really, because I think that wherever and whoever you work for, there are people that impart information to you and guide you and help you. And there are also those people that you sort of bang your head against the wall with. But when you reflect back on your career, I think that most people that I've come into contact with have helped shape who I am today, which is really nice. I have to give a, you know, a shout out to Salon at Eli in Washington DC, to Gary Walker and Terry Bell, um, who really saw, saw something in me that I didn't see or hadn't been seeing in me at that time and really pushed me hard a lot of the times. Um, and my friend Nancy Braun in LA, who is um, who's just amazing and very generous and kind. Um, and at the moment, Paul Edmonds in London, Paul and the team, uh, so supportive of me of what I'm doing in, with, in my career. And um, it really is one of those songs where you go in and you're, you're looked after as well as the clients are looked after. And, um, it's a very kind, safe environment to work in, which I really enjoy. That's good. Yeah. People feel welcomed in there, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, it all leads from Paul all the way down, but there's just a team of great people in there that um, all get along really well, which is nice. Yeah, that's good. Actually, it's, it's nice you said that, actually, about everybody. Um, okay, so, look, I mean, we've, um, we've also, like, a couple of uh, quick questions here, which is more um, favourite blonde toner. Do you have do you have a favourite blonde toner? Well, you know, I like a, I like a baby blonde. I like a nice clear. Um, so I don't tend to say toner, though, because the kind of toner always feels to me like something that's gone wrong. So I was talking in terms of glazes and glosses, um, which sort of add shine and colour, and clients react better to that. Um, I like a ten one two. I like a ten two one um, to give me that sort of slightly baby blonde feel. Um, if I need it. Uh, I always like to finish with some sort of glaze on there. I don't like to leave it a raw pre-lightener. So even if it's just clear with a dash of something in it, go to, happy. I mean, look, I, I, I think even just even the wording that you used, even glazes and things like that, sounds a little bit more appealing. I think it sounds, it's almost like, yeah. Glaze on the food. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think you could eat it too. Well, you know, women understand makeup terms and food terms, and so it's like you know, if you speak to the consumer in, in that language, they understand it more. And the, the thing about it is, its pH levels acidic, so it's similar to what the hair cuticle is. It closes the cuticle, adds shine. Who's not going to want that? Yeah. 
so it's, it's sold really yeah it's perfect, perfect. okay, okay um, um, so another, another question here was uh, favorite rose gold formula <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 rose gold it was um the bane of my life last year because it was you, is it I'm wearing a rose gold wedding band, and to me, I see more warmth with a slight hint of pink in it, whereas some people see it with more copper. So again, I think that's really a communication issue with your clients about what their idea of rose gold is. So I have a Pinterest board with it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, very good. Um, so look, um, pre-lightener, what, what pre-lightener would you use for your um, balayage? Okay, I've used the same pre-lightener that I've used since its launch back in the 90s, which is Platinium by L'Oreal Professional, part of their Studio Blonde. It's a paste lightener, um, and I like it because the consistency is lovely for me for that whole sweeping action. And um, although it has seven levels of lift, and there are products on the market that have eight, I'm happy with seven levels of lift. I'm not looking to take my client to a level 22 which, uh, as we know, doesn't exist, but uh, is out there. Um, so, yeah, I go to that. It's my go-to. Okay, very good. Um, another question as well, um, as, as, as the highlighting and uh, colour has evolved, I mean, do you, do, do you ever do use foil anymore? Do you do many foil clients? Or <laughs> well, you know, I try not to, um, but there are people that want foil. And so I think last week I did three in one day and nearly thought I was going to have a half sack. But generally speaking, no, my, my go-to is, is balayage. But I am a colorist, and therefore I can balayage, I can foil, I can tint, I can pre-lighten. You know, that's, that's my job, and that's what I'm up to do. And if I need to use the foil to create that look, then I'm going to use it. Yeah. You've almost created a niche then, really, have you? I mean, uh, as, as colouring has evolved, it's almost like it's because you, see, you still see a lot of foils going on, but I mean, it's, uh, it's almost like a niche, isn't it? It's like bespoke colouring. And well, I think that maybe it was a niche. Um, in 2010, when I landed on it in the UK, absolutely nobody was interested in it at all, um, which was quite interesting, um, considering it was so massive in the States. But I was quite Americanised by that point. I'd sort of spent most of my adult life in America. And so I was like, well, you know, if I go and work in some of these salons, I'm going to be pushed to the back of the room doing foil or something. And I'm like, no, I'm going to make this happen, which is a very American thing. And it, now, it, you know, it's very much part of the menu in a salon. And some people do, people do it very differently. And what we're going to do today is we're, I'm going to show you a way in which I teach it and which is really easy to replicate time and time and time again. Yeah. What are the key learnings from today? Like, I mean, for, for the guys that are going to tune in. Well, your key learnings are, one is practice, um, which is up to you. Um, the second one is less is more, because actually balayage is about creating contrast. Um, tension, which is incredibly important. Consistency of product, which uh, again is a huge thing. Um, sectioning, hairline and parting, which a lot of people are frightened of going close to the root. So we're going to be doing three different applications. We're going to do classic balayage, which is root to tip. I'm going to show you some creative balayage, which is where you don't go right to the root. And I'm also going to show you micro balayage, which are super fine, delicate pieces. Amazing, amazing. Can't wait for that, actually. Um, got some tongue-in-cheek questions, okay? All right. So, what's your, uh, so we get to, uh, down to the real nitty-gritty here of Jack Howard. Okay? Oh, okay. Um, your favourite movie? Favourite movie, truly, deeply, madly, um, back from the 80s, uh, Juliet Stevenson and um, Rick, what, what's his name, Rick? Alan, Alan Rickman, Rick. there you go, Alan, there that's you my favourite movie. <laughs> um, favourite book? My favourite book is a little bit strange, it's called Geek Love, and it's about um, set in America, uh, circus freaks, um, and it's from the perspective of a dwarf, and it's a very um, sad story about love and feelings and emotions and all those things. But it's beautifully written, and it's about outsiders. Um, favorite city? My favorite city depends on the weather. Um, so it could be London in the springtime, which is really interesting to look at, or it could be New York City. Okay, very, very two, two great cities actually. Yeah. Um, Mac or PT? Uh, Mac. Mac. You blonde or brunettes? 
Well, well you know, everyone think thinks I'm a blonde, blonde, but I do, I do a great blue neck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, very good. Smoothie or fry up? With this body, it's a fry up. <laughs> fry up. <laughs> um, Favourite shoot? Favourite shoot? Mm. What shoot? Like a, like, uh, like a favourite, um, well, you can say today. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite, so, I think my, my favourite one, one is always the one I've just done. Okay, okay. You okay, know, really there's always lessons awesome. learning in that. Yeah. Favourite decade? Uh, I would like to have been in my 20s in 1970s in New York City. Okay, very good. Great, great era, actually. Great decade. Um, favourite designer? Favourite designer? Um, I'm not so sort of smitten on all of that stuff anymore. I would really like what Gucci's done this year. Really, some really nice stuff. Um, I used to be mad about Dolce and Gabbana, but and I think you mix it up now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, sun or snow holiday? Sun. Sun. Okay. Your smell. What's your smell? <laughs> Favorite smell? How very dare you? <laughs> I, I like a bit of Joe Malone actually. Joe Malone. Yeah. Okay. Favorite person? My favorite person. I think my favorite person has to be my husband. Okay. Good, good choice. Um, you, are you a cat or a dog person? Both. Both? Yeah. Okay. You don't get, you I like animals. animals. You like animals? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay so, so listen, I mean, can, can I just ask, and we'll get an we'll end, end, end with this, this actually, because um, what, what does hairdressing like mean to you? Well, it is my, it is is my life, <laughs> really. I mean, I don't have many hobbies. Um, I'm either trying to keep up with my Instagram account or keep up my website going or looking at developing new strategies, you know, creating new looks and things like that. So I'm quite absorbed by the industry. But the industry is so varied that you, it's not just about working in the salon. There's lots of different things to go to. I do like the old exhibition, which kind of keeps me interested in it. Um, and I also think that... Um, Hedging education has changed so much, and that, that's why I'm here today to do this. This is a, a, a new way of learning, um, and it makes it makes me accessible to more people at that price point. So that uh, I'm really going to be interested to see how today goes. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we are so happy to have you here. I mean, for, for for this platform because it is it is completely brand new, and we, I mean, you, you would usually charge, um, cons you know. Uh, Good rate. I mean, it's still very, very valuable, but uh, it's just th this has become. Uh, we're just pushing it out to a wider audience of people and, and lowering the price a little bit. So it's um, 20 euro. It's like you, you could you have the access of, of Jack Howard here um, and get get to see his masterclass, and um, uh, watch it back and back and um, watch it. You have lifetime access to watch it back, which is uh, absolutely incredible. So um, well, I just well, it is incredible because if you go, you can say, okay, I picked up that, and you can go to work, you can do a couple of clients, and you. Can and think to yourself, that wasn't quite right. Let me go back and look at that. And so for 20 euros, you're actually getting something that you can just reference back to all the time. Whereas you can't do that if you come on one of my courses. You get a one-to-one -one with me maybe, or you get you know, 15 people in a room and I, I make sure that I to reach out to everyone. But you can't ask that question again. So it is a, it's a slightly different way of learning and it's a new concept and I think it's something that we're gonna see really grow. Thank you very much. Look, I mean, guys, if you don't have a ticket already, please do so now. Um, you have until 11 o'clock, so you can purchase a ticket today on hairdressinglive.com. And you can just choose Jack's course and purchase, and you have lifetime access to that for 20 euro. So we hope to see everybody um, at 11 o'clock. You're going to see um, Jack do his master class. So you can ask questions also um, during uh, the virtual classroom. So look, we hope hopefully see you all then. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Bye, see you later.